The deanery can be such a useful gathering, but in order for it to be that, it had to change. Deanery Synod was described to me when I took on the role of um, area dean as about as exciting as watching paint dry. So the first thing we did was move out of the room where it used to meet. We met in a very nice small room and we sat in very nice straight lines. So we moved into the biggest church hall in the deanery and we no longer sat in straight lines. We had the capacity to get together, to worship together, and then to break into sort of cafe style. And we actually got to talk to each other. One of the other things that we did right from the very beginning was to worship before our meeting. And then we left one candle burning to as a constant reminder throughout our meeting of the light of Christ and the presence of Christ. And then we decided, you know what, we ought to pray together. So not only did we have a worship time, we have a prayer time about the things that we then go on and discuss. But more than that, we actually, shock horror, we wear name badges in our deanery meetings now because there are 26 parishes, some of whom have up to three representatives, and if they all turn up, does everybody know everybody? And we are very British, and as we've met together at least three times, we ought to know each other's names. We don't. So nobody's embarrassed. We have a badge. And the deanery secretary finds it very helpful because she has the badges worked out in such a way that if you've picked up your badge and worn it, it's a double check on who's attended because people don't always sign in, do they? Anyway, those are some of the practicalities, but in order to work towards our mission plan, and we're not there yet, we're almost there because we're hoping to share it with Andy in November, but we did have to step back and say, what is this deanery for? And we've come up with the idea that our deanery initially is to encourage, resource, and enable the mission plan to even have a chance. So we have, courtesy of our lay dean, a card that has his vision that we've taken on as our vision of the deanery. He had this picture a year ago of the light breaking through a canopy and the new growth emerging. And that summed up Heart Hill. And just recently, we met together with all the input we've had from the deanery meetings and encourage, resource, and enable are the words that sort of do it for us. So we've, we've corrupted a bit just to say, here we go. Sorry about the dropping of the H, but I was born in London. Here we go. We are going to seek to resource people to enable them to get on with the mission because guess what? The people on Deanery Synod are the people from the parishes. And where is the mission going to happen? In the parishes. We are not another layer of let's do something. We need to be working together. And that is what we seek to do above all else. We need to worship together. So we have an opportunity over the coming year to meet three times deliberately as deanery, not just as deanery synod, but as deanery. We are blessed to be able to each year take the morning service on the main stage at Tribfest, which is the biggest tribute band festival in Europe. We get that main stage on that Sunday morning. So we ask all the deanery to come and worship there. We're going to hold a sunlight or a sun set, uh, dawn Easter service. No big change, not, whoa, that's a novel idea. Well, it is for Heart Hill Deanery to get together to do it. And we're also going to get together and worship at Epiphany. Because when you're in a church, maybe with 12 people worshiping, it's very nice on occasions to get together with 200, 300, isn't it? So we need to build up the worship. We need people to be excited, empowered, and then enabled. Because if our deanery mission plan is going to start anywhere, it's got to start with the people in the deanery wanting to get out and share, 
just how important Jesus Christ is to each one, every one of us. So I'm going to stop now because Andy knows I can wrap it on forever. But if you can spare a thought, please pray for Heart Hill Deanery. Thank you. So you've heard something about the vision that we've got, the three purposes that we seek to work towards, and a little bit about how it's beginning to work out uh, for us in a rural deanery. What one, of the, one of the conclusions we came to, which is not rocket science, none of this is rocket science at all, is that leadership was going to be key to deliver that vision. And we took the decision to scrap every expression of committee that we could find in any deanery. And we said to them, every committee is coming to an end, and instead, you'll have a deanery leadership team. When that team needs to act as a committee, so when you need to be in standing committee mode, we'll make sure it's created so it can do that. When, it need, when you need a deanery mission and pastoral committee, we'll make sure it's created in a way so you can, the deanery leadership team can fulfill that. But other than that, you will operate as a deanery leadership team first and foremost. So the task of that team is to lead the deanery to fulfill the vision. As I say, we wanted to get away from the sense of committee, you know, where you come to every meeting and there's so many set items already on the agenda, and if you've got nothing to say about one of those items, you find something to say because it's on the agenda. You know, that whole sort of just that mentality of sitting in the same seat in the same place, that mentality and so many people saying nothing at all in a committee, all of that we wanted to scrap and replace with a sense of team of people that are united to work towards the same goal and the same vision. So we've worked with uh, our registrar in saying, what's the minimum number the church representation rules require for us to have? And we worked out we needed to have in our old money a rural dean and a lay chair, a, a, a deanery secretary, and one elected clergy member and one elected lay person. And we added what we have in our, dean, in our diocese called deanery financial advisors, which we didn't, church representation rules didn't require, but we added that because that works for where we are. So the minimum size is six, and we then said you can then co-opt up to another six. So the deanery leadership team will be between six and 12, with an encouragement to try and stay small if you can. But therefore, we're minimising the number of elected people so that you can then identify the people who've got the right gifts and approach for your deanery at that time, giving enormous scope for how they wanted to define that. And we actively encouraged turnover. We looked, as I said, at our current leadership, and as I said, though faithful, many were tired, they were uninspired, and some were uninspiring. And so we ran the change running up to triennium elections, and we specifically said to the lay chairs, this big change is coming, it's going to require leadership and energy. If you don't feel you're the person to lead that, then maybe now is the time to step down. And actually, a lot did. It was, I'll be honest, quite a gift to us that so many did, because some weren't the sort of people that would bring leadership that we were looking for. We looked at our area deans, we continued to look at who we had, and working out even more as they, they're appointed and uh, working out who should take on that role to be careful with that. So we encourage turnover, and we have seen significant turnover. I think it's true in Hart Hill that all of the new junior leadership team, none of them were on the standing committee before. And that's, that, I, don't, I think that's the most extreme example we've had, but a lot of places where new people have caught a vision for what deanery can be and have been drawn into it. We really needed to address lay leadership. So we made a number of changes. We said we'll change the name. See, a lay chair, if, if you value what you name and you name what you value, then you've got a lay person that chairs a meeting. That's what a lay chair is. So that's not about leadership. And that's quite different to the rural dean or the area dean, who has a different type of title. We've moved to a system where we now have an area dean and a lay dean, and they can share entirely in their tasks. So anything that the area dean can do, the lay dean can do. 
So that means obviously chairing Synod and lead, chairing the Deanery leadership team, they're shared. We have a Deanery representative on all clergy appointments. That can be the 